that's the uh, so, media I'm so let's talk about Winter Storm because I've yeah. got a chance to to listen to the to the record, and uh, the first thought that came to mind is because maybe not not everybody's aware of this, but this album is a concept record. So can you share share some of of what the storyline is, of what the concept was, and maybe how it was all born? <laughs> oh yeah. oh boy. Uh... Uh, where to start? Well, it's no secret that the whole album was mainly written. Of course, there was stuff. We had some raw ideas when Talasic was ready, because we always end up having too much ideas that we couldn't finish. Uh, but it was mainly composed during COVID. So it was really fucked up times. And uh, yeah, as a lyric writer, this was definitely the hardest album I've ever encountered. Uh, there was like we had these raw ideas for songs and uh, I listened to those and I was like, oh, so would this song could be about this or that? And, and uh, because that's how Engineer works. It's never like, I think I mentioned it. I, I, I always, uh, not envy, because envy is a bit low, but uh, <laughs> I, I really like the method that Tuamas from Nightwish has always worked, that he has a story and then he starts to compose music. That's something that I really like this mentality but yeah for NC Film, it's always there's like bits of music and then you start to get like lyric and vocal arrangement and then they kind of grow up together but yeah for this one I, I listened to raw demos and uh, I wrote some really rough ideas but they were always very artificial I, I don't know the English word too, but like the music was there and then I just tried to glue something on top of it but it was like yeah it just didn't work <laughs> it was didn't feel real, organic. I'd say organic. Yeah, that might be a good word. Yeah, uh, and I'm not lying. I, I I would say like two years passed like that. Like uh, the guys were really like pushing me for a long period of time. Like we can't really progress with the arrangements with the songs before we get some lyrics and really the vocal ideas, because of course that affects how the songs. You know the the composing process continues. If you just write music for five minutes and then start adding uh, the vocals, it usually ends up sounding like a piece of shit. Not always. I know some bands really work like this, and it's okay. Not here to judge. And uh, <laughs> so there was a lot of pressure coming. And yeah, I had a day job. I took a day job when COVID hit. So there was this, and yeah, we're not eighteen anymore. Other responsibilities to other people and uh, it was really hard to find the lyrical theme and uh, I guess I was like really desperate at some point and started to think like I, I don't remember exactly how I see this light at the end of the tunnel but this is how I would imagine that I, I went through this point of the uh, should I read one of my favorite some one of my favorite books and use this just make like a theme album of one book and then it kind of hit me like yeah but how about that book that I never wrote that I've been planning like for 10 years that I was I was planning to write this when things are more calm. I, I don't want to say when we retired because that's not going to happen. But uh, I always thought in my mind that I would probably start writing it after I'm 50 or something like this. Like really like when things are much more maybe calmer, hopefully I, I could manage to quit my day job and just play gigs and wake up in the morning and start writing a book. This was my idea, but of course, the last four years have proven that you can plan all the things you ever want, but somehow the universe will say, fuck, no. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, that, that was a desperate moment, and I started thinking, like, could this big story that th uh, reaches throughout generations, could I take something, like some fragment of this big story and use it on this album? So then I started listening to raw demos with this idea in my head, like these people and these events that happen in this one period of the book. And I was like, actually, yeah, this song kind of has this mood of these heroic guys and da 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 da. I was like, oh, boom, that ended up being Winter of Vigilant, Winter Storm Vigilantes. And uh, other songs also, it was really like, yeah, this, this character, kind of, yeah, or this tribe or this event, like then it all started to match. And uh, then the lyric writing was easy, but it really was pain in the ass to get to that point. 
<laughs> so I'm as a lyric writer, I'm I'm more than proud of what we just made. But I, I need to emphasize because that's been asked many times. Like, so will be there like a sequel? Will there be more albums about this book? And I'm definitely gonna say no. These two worlds never meant to meet. <laughs> and the, the the story of the book uh, they never meant to meet. Now they met for one album. And uh, but it also fits the music because yeah, it was composed during kind of dark times, and the story is not really well. It's a fantasy story. I mean, it, and then it fits this mood. So uh, already the next album because now we have some raw stuff for the next album is already very different, and I know that would not fit kind of the cinematic idea of, uh, I think of a book. This two things I took from the album. This is mm -hmm. a very theatrical cinematic record. It it's yes. almost feels like a movie score uh, at times, yes. which is very different from anything Enciferum has really ever done. And then it's mm -hmm. also very dark. So is the darkness coming from the time period in which it was written? Or is also the theme of the album brings a little bit of that darkness with it? Uh, yeah, definitely. The the way I always saw it, like an album reflects like the last two, three years of the band's history. What happened to the band? What happened to members? You can, in a way, if I look back now, I can kind of hear on every album, like, yeah, this really reflects the time that happened just before the album was released. Like like Victory songs. It was like, we were young. We were just partying and, you know, woo, it was just fucking fun. And <laughs> there were no stress about anything. You can really hear that from that album. There was just a lot of this young men's testosterone, like, ooh, we're going to conquer the world and party till we fucking die. You can really hear that from that album. And now you can really hear it was composed during one of the hardest times we ever lived. I mean, of course, it was a whole fucking planet one was in this stuff. And uh, we're still here. We didn't die. And... Uh, and uh, of course, many things changed, but uh, it could have been worse. But uh, you can really hear this from the album. And of course, the like I said, the book is not well. It's a fantasy book. I, I think that many fantasy books are that like, ha ha, like funny. Of course, you can have funny moments in moments. there, but uh, yeah, yeah, but not not like comedy. So I guess <laughs> they kind of fit together. Um, yeah. But that, that's also like maybe the next album you can now there's a bit of maybe hope in the world and the music business <laughs> so maybe that also and there are some sparkles of joy so maybe that already uh, affects the new new songs that we're working on it, it starts to plant its seed to the next record uh yes you wrote uh one of two of my favorite songs on the record and that is fatherland um I, I love that. Like, I really love that song. It's one, like I said, it's one of my favorite songs on the record. Uh, was this, I, I know this is the only song that you wrote on this album, uh, but I don't think I've ever asked you, ha have you written songs before for Insiferum or is this your first, your go going at it? Yes. Uh, the thing is that it's a bit misleading to say that I wrote it because I, I wrote most of the ideas, like the, the melodies. Yeah and uh, kind of the raw ideas of the riffs. But uh, the way Enzifer works, it's always like all the ideas that are presented in the rehearsal room or like nowadays you send MP3 demos or whatever, they're always, uh, nothing is sacred. <laughs> Everything can be torn apart. All the ideas that someone suggests, we will try. No matter how fucking stupid or crazy, we will try. And... Uh, Sometimes they don't work, uh, they don't work, and uh, sometimes someone suggests something, and boom, the result is even better than your original idea. Uh, so it was still very much arranged together, and yeah, Marcus did some guitar stuff naturally that I could have even think about, and that that you know I'm a bass player, I'm I'm not a guitar player, I can play guitar, but uh, you always need the masters of particular instrument to really arrange it properly that's the way i see it uh yeah i've, I've composed a lot of stuff uh, in the past uh even for the uh well victor songs was kind of the first real album was ep in between but yeah 
sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> this actually kind of cool detail. Uh, I, you know that I worked as a kindergarten teacher for 20 years as a, like a substitute between the tours, like doing one day there, two days there, and so on. Uh, the core of Victory Song, the, the kind of the title song, was the idea came on the yard of a kindergarten while I was watching the little rascals running around and I got this melody in my head. I, you, I'm Most of the time I'm just humming something in my head. I'm doing my own soundtrack of my life all the time. <laughs> and I just started humming a melody. I was like, this is too good. And this is time way before smartphones. So I didn't have anything to record it. So I just ran inside, I took a guitar and I played it like a zillion times. Like, oh, I need to remember this until I get home and I guess like record it. And uh, luckily I did. But that's also a really good example of how Ainsman works. I remember I sent, I'm sorry, I'm going like really back in the history. I sent Mahi like a CD uh, that <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, like like, uh, like with my all raw ideas that I got at that point that could fit Ainsman. And uh, the chorus of Victory's song was just one, well, it was a chorus of another raw song, but all the other parts were just pure bullshit. But Mahi heard the idea, like, this is really good. We need to have this. And uh, then we present the rest of the band, and boom, Janne added, tem like, 100 beats per minute, more tempo, and uh, the guy started to, like, do, like, much more fast guitar stuff. And uh, that's how we work. That, you know, you might have the original idea, but then it's really the band that. Brings it to life. What's the, what, what, what's the difference between composing arrange, and arranging? Sometimes it's really hard to say. But yeah, I, I always brought ideas to the band, and uh, that's the policy. Everybody can bring, and no matter what. Even though Marcus is the founder and the main composer, but even all the stuff he brings, nothing is sacred. We will fucking dismantle everything and <laughs> maim them until they're like unrecognizable. But usually, especially for this album, uh, because yeah, he took the leap of fate to modern times, so he could actually record stuff with the computer now. Uh, so he could do a lot of the work uh, that we usually do in rehearsal room, like checking different chord alternatives and different, like, could this melody, instead of doing the do do go like do 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 and all this kind of stuff. So he could do a lot of this at home. So a lot of the material he brought to rehearsal room, of course, we destroyed everything and tried different ideas. But quite fast, we noticed that many of these were the final version. These were the best versions, pretty much. So... That took a lot of time from this, uh, took a lot of time away from this uh, sweating in rehearsal room together, going through every idea. Of course, we did, but we know this much fast, very fast that, yeah, those are really good ideas that Marcus had. Because if he wouldn't have done this, if we really would have worked like the old school way, like we always do, like, I don't think the album would be even composed, not to even mention we have booked studio yet. Uh, you, things just went so slow. And I take a lot of blame from that. Uh, well, I also had to take a day job because I need to pay my rent and feed my cat. <laughs> That's <laughs> so important. On. The, the yeah. cat perhaps more than the rent, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but it's important. And, and you know, I, I gotta ask you this question because it's something that yeah. over the last two singles, Antonio and I have debated back and forth. And that mm -hmm. is Pekka and Petri's role as far as the vocals are concerned. We obviously see a lot more of Pekka on this on this record, even than Thalassic. Um, but is do you guys look at both of them uh, from a vocal standpoint and try to find room for both? Uh, how does it work? Because you know it, it feels like it's becoming more fifty fifty between them. That's actually true. It's never been intentional because the clean vocals, if you listen to like first two albums, they were always like a kind of spice in Ensemble music. They were always there. Uh, but uh, especially for Talasic, it was so awesome when Becca joined. We know it's like, fuck, this guy can sing like, ah! yeah. And so may maybe we overdid it because, you know, you get too excited when <laughs> you have a new toy. And I mean, Becca's voice as a toy now, not, not Becca. He's not a toy boy. <laughs> Uh, but for this uh, <laughs> windstorm, we really wanted to, and he wanted himself because he, how fucked up is that? He doesn't identify as a power metal singer with that kind of voice. Are you kidding it, me? It, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, he, I, we said he, it on one of the videos that if Blind Guardian ever needed a fill-in singer, he would be perfect. Yeah. Well, Hamzy also, he, he does, he variates his vocals a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not just high and loud all the time. And yeah, that's what Pekka said. Uh, I think after Talasi was recorded, like he really would like also try different stuff. And we all agreed, like, yes, absolutely, because he can do much more. And uh, that's what we did for this album. The things that there are no, what, well, I'm sorry, not my English vocabulary is reaching its limits. Like, we don't have this kind of, in religion, you have dogma or something like this, mm -hmm. like, like this holy thing that can never be challenged or whatever. And uh, we don't have that. And like, we don't have the idea that we need to have 75% of harsh vocals on this album or it will never be released. Well, no, we listen to every song, every part individually, what serves the best. And uh, for this album, yeah, it really became almost like 50-50. But uh, I think these two songs, they have more Pekka's vocals than maybe some songs. Uh, yeah, but overall, like the, when you look at overall the record, I think yeah. it's pretty 50-50. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's very possible. But that also fits well this um well i said it in uh, one of these clips that i uh, when i started thinking this album as a musical <laughs> then it started to make sense to me much more than uh individual songs and uh it also it fits well if you have like kind of change in the like an, who's the narrator in this one and uh and uh in some songs they're like singing in the first person view so it kind of needs to be the same person who's singing with the same voice who's singing yeah, yeah. from I, I honestly, me, when I, me, me, me. When I was listening <laughs> to the record, I actually felt that his voice was really important. This is a very epic, theatrical, cinematic sounding record. It's very hard to do that with harsh vocals. Like, you know, I mean, like, uh, you know, it's just it is you, you need a, you need a voice that can go a lot, a lot bigger. Um, yeah. But Petri's role on the on the record, I thought was really important as well, because I felt like the album sound wise was really big, but it's not necessarily a super heavy record. So his <laughs> voice, at least it brings a little bit of heaviness to, to the songs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this album w wouldn't have worked if there were been just clean vocals. No, I mean, that, that would have been not boring, but nah, that would have been stale. Is yeah. that the right word? I agree. I agree. The, so you need this variation, and yeah, Petri is the the lead singer of the band. He's the front man. That's the way I always saw it. And uh, even though Marcos is the, the heart and soul, <laughs> if you need to consider this, if you need to think about labeling people, and uh, I think it works very well that uh, there's this. I mean, especially in live situation, it's, it's really cool for if you have long tours, playing long sets. I think it's really nice that uh, Pete can also have a breather every now and then, so he don't need to scream his ass off for like 90 minutes every night. Especially on tours, you're doomed to bed, get sick at some point. So this is really good for live performances that we can share a bit of this stuff. And then in the vocals, you guys didn't stay there. You, you went and you got Madeline from Elaine to do a whole song. Yes. That blew me away, by the way. Like, I was not, like, I didn't have that in my bingo card. When I sat down <laughs> to listen to this record, I did not have that. You guys are going to go outside, get a female vocalist to come in and sing a whole song. N not a verse, not a chorus, a whole song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a funny song, too. Well, it, it's... I remember when Marco sent the, the raw demo of the song like i, I well it's, it probably was just like two parts or something uh, but it, it had the main melody the, the chorus melody and uh i called him like dude is this your song I, are you fucking with me now like this, this sounds like a like some real musician like some mozart composition i mean the melody is so so good so beautiful so so nice details there and he said yeah it's mine i was like this is, this is fantastic this is gonna be so beautiful song and uh, in a way, it's the most straightforward song on the album, kind of most easy listening. And it was quite easy to arrange, but we all the time we knew that how are we going to do the vocals? Like, how? 
And <laughs> then we did some demos. Pekka was doing, uh, trying different styles. And uh, even Pete did a version, like harsh vocals. <laughs> I would love to hear we, uh, that. <laughs> Yeah, that there was a, like just few raw lines, uh, yeah, a few raw lines because I had like, yeah, okay, this song needs to be about this connected to this one event that happened in the book, but it was very clear that that, that really didn't work, and uh, I think it was Janne who said like out loud that everybody knew that we need a female singer for this song, it, otherwise it just it doesn't work. It's a waste of a song, even though it means that it's gonna be really hard to play it live. But at least on the album, it will, because there it will live forever. Mm -hmm. Once the album is out, you can't do anything to the songs anymore, no matter how good ideas you get afterwards. Uh, but yeah, we were really thinking about like the obvious choices of metal scene. You know, there are really good female singers. And we were even thinking about being outside the metal genre, because it's, a, even though it's a heavy song, but it's almost, it's a ballad still. So. It's a ballad, so it and it could, has a very Victorian vibe to it. Yes, yes. So it could have been actually, we were even fooling around with an idea, like uh, getting someone from outside metal genre to do it. But we couldn't find anyone that we knew, okay, this is the person. Like, you don't, we didn't get the, the feeling like, yes, that's it. We need to ask her. So then, yeah, the pain tour started to get closer, and we decided, okay, let's, do the tour and let's get back to this day after that tour. Like, ah, uh, let's clear our mind and sleep a few weeks in a bus and get drunk and naked and, <laughs> and play a few shows. And I think it was like after the second evening, uh, well, the like second evening, I think I went to see the rest of the bands, uh, uh, Elaine and Eugene. And uh, not just me, I think others were also there. And uh, everybody said pretty much the same time, like, Fuck, she's a good singer. But uh, of course, we're Finns. We're very shy and we don't talk to anyone. <laughs> so it took like good two weeks to us uh, to gather the courage to actually talk to her about this. Of course, there's a small talk on tour all the time, but they actually have a serious conversation and conversation for something like this. It took, it took a while. And uh, yeah, she came to our bus and uh, uh, we listened to Raw Demo and uh, she, she really liked the song. And uh, then we send it to her and she could check at home. Uh, is the key right or do we need to change it for her? And uh, she did like a rough recording. She, I think she had like on from a stereo or something. And then she had a phone like, and then she was singing at the same time and recorded this stuff and it sounds so good. So that was the moment, the latest that we knew, okay, this song is going to be fantastic. And uh, yeah, she flew to Helsinki, did her magic and boom, it's there. And yeah, really cool detail. I, I have to mention it every time when we're talking about this song is that it's the only song that has just the one vocal track. Like every other song has like harmonies and even Pete has like doubled some grows and uh, of course the choirs, but this the choirs, one, lots of choirs. Yes, we love those. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but this one, it, it, it tells about a widow, obviously uh, missing a longing person she lost. So it fits the mood that there's just one voice, just her and her thoughts and feelings and no layered harmonies or anything. It's this is solitude feeling in the song. And I really love that. She yeah, when, when I was listening to the record and that song came on, my surprise was not the fact that there was a, whim, a, a woman singing because I mm -hmm. thought that that song could not have anybody else singing it. Like, yeah. even, from, even from a, a, a lyrical standpoint, I mean, I don't, how, how you have somebody else, it's impossible. You, you had to be somebody singing. So when I was listening to the record, I, I, even, I didn't even know it. Like, I listened to it. And the when I got to the end of the album, I was like, hey, wait a minute. There was a song there. <laughs> that just, <laughs> like, it, it didn't, it, I didn't register at that time because it felt so right. But at yeah. the end of the album, I was like, hey, wait a minute. There was a song there. There was nobody else but a woman singing. Who's this woman? And then I went back to find out who it was and whatever. I was like, wow. Because in that moment, it, it feels right. You, you're just, yeah. just going to enjoy the track and you're not really concerned about, oh, there's there's no Pete or there's no Pack or whatever. That yeah. could become an issue. It's just the song yeah. is really good. So at the end of it, I was like, wow, that's really interesting. 
what a what yeah. a what a choice, what a gamble, if you will, to a certain degree. Yeah, and uh, well, there was a lot of discussions about the order of the songs for this album because I wrote the lyrics and I had the idea like how well I knew how the story will go, like this fraction of the big story. So there had to be like red line. I mean, it couldn't go like this, this, and then something that happens here. Like I said, no, it really needs to go like this. And uh, there was a lot of uh, conversation of the spot for this song because it could have been like the last song or, you know, uh, but it's quite early on the album. Uh, yeah, it yeah, was it's uh, in the right front. place for this. Yeah, I, I think it's the right be... place for it as well. I, I really do. Yeah. And I also really enjoyed the, the interludes that you guys did at the end, towards the end of the record, because it really meshes the songs well and it allows the bottom end of the album to feel really continuous and not yeah. and not have breaks. So I really enjoyed that as well. So from a design standpoint, I think you guys really brought the uh, concept to life in terms of how you place the songs. Uh, it, it helps the listener follow the, yeah. the the journey, the path all the way yeah. through. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's so true. And uh, that's why this album is also a bit challenging if you just hear one song <laughs> from it. Like you, you got, I, I checked your... Uh, uh, no. reactions to the first video and uh, I, I really love the you guys were like so what the fuck is the rest of the album like <laughs> <laughs> and you know after listening to the record I recorded my review yesterday that I will have like closer to the release date and what I said on my review is that this album needs to be heard as a record uh, yeah the, the, the there's maybe one or two songs that you can take out of the context of the record and they'll and they'll yeah. be totally fine but the mm -hmm. more epic songs you need a sense of sequence because otherwise yeah. it just feels you feel constrained. Like you, you yeah. need you need what comes after. You need to continue. That's why yes. that first single I was like, "Well, what's what's happening here?" Like you know, like, <laughs> I, I, I I feel like this could have gone on or like it. it, it yeah. And it's very different from Thalassic. If you look at the yeah. last record, where each yeah. song is just an individual snapshot. Yes, you know what I mean. So it it, it exactly. takes a little bit of growing to this album to get used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this brings us to uh, one of my favorite things about this album. Uh, I mean, I I've, I've always enjoyed movies since I was a fucking kid. Uh, but as a musician, I always hated making music videos because we never have a budget. I mean, we're not Rammstein or anything like this, and uh, there's never an idea. And even if there's an idea, there's no way to, especially before like uh, computers and so on. It was really like, how many metal videos there are where the guys are just standing in a forest and headbanging? Like, come on, yeah. so many. And and it, you always end up there. And I think it's a bit. I don't think it's cool for fans. They're wasting a few minutes of their life watching this kind of shit. <laughs> I mean. I, I'm really happy, like Andromeda video that we did on the previous album. That was really cool because there was already a bit of a story in it. Uh, but what happened now, because it's a fraction of a bigger story, it's really a book from a book. So it, we talked with Metal Blade and uh, we convinced them that there's actually going to be four videos in the end, plus the lyric video that now came out. Uh, and you can watch this. Well, I only seen two videos now, but uh, I talked with Marcin, the the guy who's making the videos, and uh, I sent him like this the raw script for every video. And uh, at some point, he came back to me like, "Sami, you know we don't have a budget of Lord of the Rings." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, I know, but come on, you can do it, you can do it." And and uh, but he got really carried away with this. He, I think he got so ambitious. He was like, "Yeah, every video needs to be better and bigger and mm, than the previous one." So. I'm really curious how he's going to... He wrote me just a few days ago that, yeah, he got actors for the last two videos and they're like super professional and it should be really, really cool. I'm very happy. But yeah, the, where I was going, but I'm happy and proud that these four videos, you can actually watch them in a row and it makes like a short movie. Oh. They kind of continue, kind of. There's just like, of course, there's a time gap between first and the second video. But uh, it kind of continues. And of course, the second and the third, there's going to be a gap in the, in the story. But you can still follow the story. So that's, uh, this is really, really cool. But yeah, it's very different from Talassic, where you can just listen to 
one hit song and then get on with your life. I agree. <laughs> so I, agree. I, I it's really, once again, we do another commercial suicide in this time of 30 second TikTok videos. <laughs> we make an album like you need to listen at least four songs in a row to make sense. Yeah. Let's well, see. It, it, this album has a lot of gambles and, uh, you know, we talked about Scars in My Heart and, and the concept and everything, but uh, I, I think you guys always follow your heart and I think that's the most important thing. Sammy, I know you got to jump yes. on to another interview. Thank you very much for your time. I'll, uh, I'll uh, see you. We still have, like, we still have time. Oh, we do? If you have questions. Yeah, if you have questions, yeah. I'm here well, I had one question <laughs> that I was not going to ask because I didn't yeah. think I had time. So if I can squeeze one question, which is about Peg and Fest. You guys are part of yeah. Peggin Fest 2025. Yes. Um, yes. How excited are you to be part of, of a, a rebirth <laughs> of Peggin Fest? Well, I don't think I have words. It's, it's gonna, this is something we've talked for years that uh, with many bands. I mean, it, always when you end up in a bar with uh, musicians, you end up talking like, you know, Beaver Bar is it, like a extra living room you end up talking with bands who might be in the same genre and also when you're a tour or a festival you might need meet other bands and we talked so long about like we should revise something like this because uh it was a lot of fun i mean some people overdid it back in the days like 10 15 years ago they they did, did way too much because uh folk metal never had kind of the second wave so to say there was never well, you see it now. It's it's the same bands pretty much on the tour that were there like 15 years ago, which is really sad that there was no new bands that took over and told our us old fart like "fuck you," I'm gonna do what you do, but much better with our own twist. So I really hope that will happen uh, eventually. And but until then, I'm really happy that Pagan Fest is having a rebirth, and we're gonna be there with these fantastic bands and. Friends, it's going to be another tour with just friends and it's going to be one hell of a party around Europe. I think it's going to be the biggest tour we ever did. I yeah, so. it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be insane. It's a massive, and, uh, massive tour. Yeah, the, the venues are, uh, I was just talking with my friend from UK and he said, uh, yeah, the venue we play in London, he saw Iron Maiden there once. And I'm like, fuck me. Like, <laughs> like, it's going to be really big. It's going to be a lot of fun and uh I really hope someone has the balls to do it in states and not that, where it goes. This was going to ask you. I, th I think it needs to come to this side because I think if if yeah. you look at the lineup that you guys have in Europe, that lineup would work here a hundred percent. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so yeah, we need to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, but, I'm actually thinking of flying for one of the shows to come and see you guys for one of the shows. I've been looking at well, the tour okay. dates. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out which country I can fly the cheapest. So that yeah, can, yeah, nowadays. Yeah, so I can just fly in, watch the show, and then fly out. Uh, because it's such a cool tour package. I, I would love to 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 attend one of the shows. So I think the Europeans are freaking lucky and they don't even know it. I agree. Uh, I was just going to suggest you come to UK and... Uh... I don't know what's our bus situation. It might be actually full. I'm really sorry. Otherwise, we would get you in a bunk from the bus. And No, no. For <laughs> I mean, me, I'm really planning on just flying in, watching the show, and hopping on a plane and flying right back out. <laughs> okay. Uh, enjoy your jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> it's too quick for you to even notice. You know that, I mean? that might be actually true. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise, uh, I, I have to mention this. We're going to do something really cool. Well, it's out now. Uh, uh, we're going to do pre-listening session with the new album. Like, I think it's two, three days before the album is out. We're going to do it in Bodom Bar. And uh, yeah, it's open. Like, like it's not fucking tickets are sold or anything. We're going to listen to the new album there. And the whole band will be there for fans uh, to listen to the album with us and ask questions. And uh, they even managed to squeeze in so that the people who pre-ordered the album can actually get it from there like three days earlier and then if they want us to destroy the cover art or whatever we... <laughs> autograph where they will be there but that's really cool that's a I, I i just hope we would have all the four videos let already then we could actually show them as a really preview 
in a row for yeah, people. Yeah. But, that would but be they're, really they're cool. not really, that yeah. Would be really cool. And uh, this is something I, I was thinking. Well, you can cut this out if you feel like, but this is something I was thinking afterwards. Like, this should have been done in advance, but all the videos. So we could, we could have had like a pre listening session for media also. Like, uh, uh, a friend of mine actually offered, he has a small movie th uh, theater in his office, kind of. He, he makes videos and all kind of weird stuff. And uh, he said, yeah, if you guys want to ask, like, uh, a few friends from uh, journalists to come there, he could, like, he has this super mega Dolby Atmos, whatever sound thing. And if you have any videos, he could also show it there. I was like, fuck, we should have thought this, like, two years ago. I've started to plan this ahead but you live and learn maybe next time yeah, yeah. maybe next time maybe next time yeah but yeah then we're gonna do a few shows with swallow the sun which is quite an odd couple but uh <laughs> let's see it, well, it's just in finland uh the way i see it we're both of us have kind of hit the, the glass ceiling uh to read it's really hard to reach new people anymore. yeah but you know what the I funny thing about about that is I don't, I don't know if you've heard there they have a new album coming out as well yeah uh, same day <laughs> yeah so it, exactly same day uh october 18th yeah. both of them come out yeah. october 18th and their album just like your album is very different from everything they've done up until this point so i find that very interesting that both bands are releasing um unique records like you guys are both releasing yeah. unique different records from what the discography has been on the same day and then you guys are going to play playing shows together so that's really interesting yeah i mean i i, I love the guys and i i haven't i can admit i haven't heard the singles yet same as the new nightwish i haven't listened to it yet it, and also winter sun i haven't listened to that <laughs> you got a lot I, I to admit, catch up I know, but I, I'm a bit busy, <laughs> so, and I, I want to give uh, uh, the respect for the album that they deserve. I really want to be without any other distractions, just to go for a walk and headphones on, walk in the forest, so that I really have just the music to focus on. And uh, yeah, same for Swallow the Sun. I haven't listened to any singles yet. I really want to listen to the whole album when it comes yeah, out, and I really I like the old stuff. So. I, I think curious. you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, I think that's going to be a great show uh, with both bands, especially both releasing new records on the same day. So I think that's going yes. to be super cool. Yes. And, uh, well, I'm sorry I can't reveal anything too precise yet, but there are a lot of plans for the next year and the year after that. And uh, we will come to North America. Fucking yeah, finally. it's about time. I think the last time you guys were here was right before the pandemic in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's insane. With Kalma, <laughs> I think that tour was with Kalma. Yeah, that that I, I know. I, I mean, I can check calendar and I can see how many years have passed. But really, like last four years just vanished. It doesn't feel like it was four years. It feels like just one year passed. <laughs> yeah, one, was... one kind of long year, but one one year. Yeah, now. right. Really fucking long month. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels. That's how it feels. Sammy, thank yeah. you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Pedro. Always a pleasure to see you and talk to you. And uh, maybe yes. see you at that Pagan Fest. Uh, if not, yeah. I'll see you in North America when you guys return. Absolutely. And uh, let's stay in touch. All the best to the family. Same to and, you. Uh, same to you. To you, the wife, the kids. And uh, stay stay uh, close to those kids and, and writing some riffs while you're keeping an eye out for them. Yes. Take care. Thank you. All the best. All the best.